Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanegi and we're Addicted Fishing. If you guys are new to this channel, be sure to go down and hit that subscribe button and those little bell notifications. We come out with different kinds of entertaining and educational pieces every single day here on YouTube. So go down and subscribe to that channel. Today we're doing a little tutorial, something we've never talked about before. It's about trout fishing, but we're gonna talk about how to catch trout on canned corn. So stay tuned, it's gonna come at you right now. First things first, canned corn is probably one of the oldest tricks in the book to go out and catch any kind of kokanee or trout that we have out there. It's something that's very underutilized. It's actually one of the easiest and cheapest forms of bait, but it's something that people forget to use. So we're gonna show you today the rod, reel, line setup, and two different ways of fishing this corn, and also give you a couple little secrets on things that I like to do to the corn to make it a little bit better and kind of entice that bite even more. So first things first, we're gonna start with our first rod setup. What I have here is an Okuma Guide Select Pro two to six pound, seven and a half foot ultralight rod. The ultralight rod is imperative in this situation and any kind of trout fishing for me because I like the light action. I like the flexible tip so that you can cast a long ways even if you're using light line or light presentations. Uh, and it also is a lot of fun to fight some kind of fish on, whether it be big or small. What I have on here is this 3000 series RTS reel. You can use any form of reel that you want, but I like the 3000 to a 2000 series. I prefer a three because it's big enough that I can transfer it to different fishing rods that I have and use it in a lot of different adaptions, whether it be bass, trout, steelhead, anything that I have in my local area, I can use that reel for and it's not just a one trick pony on that rod. Another very imperative part of the setup is the 10 pound braided line that I have on here. I like the 10 pound because it casts very easy and you can fit a lot of it on your reel. What I've done here on this setup, this is a sliding float setup. This is going to be a, one of my preferred float setups because I can adjust my depth at all ranges and it's still super easy to cast even if I am fishing very deep, which a lot of times this corn works well in that deep water. So what I have on the end of my 10 pound braided line here is a 12 pound fluorocarbon bumper. And we actually just did a tutorial not too long ago on this float fishing setup so that you guys can see exactly how we float or how we fish this uh, and set this setup up. Uh, and showed you the knot and everything else, but I'm just gonna give you the quick rundown today because we're gonna talk about more. I have a blood knot that's securing that 10 pound test to my 12 pound fluorocarbon all the way down to my little bobber stop here. And the bobber stops come in many forms. You go to your tackle shop and you ask for a bobber stop. They'll either give you these or a little piece of thread that's tied in a nail knot that you're gonna put onto your line, secure, and then you slide your float onto that. So what I have here is my sliding float that's stopped by the depth that I set that red stopper at. So that's the purpose of that little red stopper, is I have my weight underneath my bobber, that weight falls through and it catches on that little red stopper. So below that, I have my eight ounce float or quarter ounce. You don't wanna to go too heavy because you don't want those fish to feel it when they pull it under. And you wanna be able to pull it under easily if they are a light biting trout. Down below that, I have two split shots. Number seven is the size on my 12 pound test tied to a barrel swivel. The other side of that barrel swivel, I have my six pound fluorocarbon line. I like to go light line on this because I'm not gonna be snagging up on bottom too often if I have my depth set correctly and I don't want those fish to see that leader. All the way about three feet down to my Mustad number four bait hook. These have little spurs on the back of them which allow that corn or whatever bait you're using to stay on there very well. That way you're not gonna be losing that corn on your cast or it's not gonna be sliding off every time a fish touches it. The other setup I'm gonna fish this with, and this is a suspended setup, so this setup is not gonna be on the bottom. The corn most commonly floats, especially once you get it down into a certain part of the water column, the buoyancy kind of takes place and it starts to float up off the bottom, which I'm gonna rely on for this setup. Same exact rod setup, same line, all the way down to a little quarter ounce sliding float, or excuse me, sliding weight. That weight slides up and down on my braided line there so that I can feel that bite really well when that trout comes up and grabs my corn. If my weight is secured to my swivel, that fish is gonna feel that weight pulling on the hook rather than that easy slide going straight back and through so that you can feel the bite from that trout. I got another barrel swivel on there with again, my six pound leader all the way down to my number four hook. And your, your leader length is gonna vary on this setup where on my float setup, I have it about three feet. My leader length varies on this setup to however deep I need or however far up off the bottom I need to be, whether it be a heavy structured area that I'm fishing for these trout or whether it be a lot of weeds, I need that corn to be able to float up and off the bottom. So now that we've covered the setups, I'm gonna go over the main ingredient here and it's the corn. 
I never like to use more than about two or three pieces of corn, whether I'm fishing on the bottom or I'm fishing subsurface, um, using my float set up to keep it off the bottom. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my hook and I'm just gonna take each little kernel of corn, hook it from the bottom to the top is the way I like to do it. So the bottom of the corn kernel all the way through the top of it. I'm gonna slide that up just like so. I'm gonna grab another piece and today I'm just gonna fish two just like so. And that's gonna be your primary setup on how to fish that corn. And the thing that these fish are going off of when it comes to this corn is mainly the scent. They like that scent, it looks like some sort of food, especially if they're a stalker trout, they've been fed some sort of natural pellet or, or mixed pellet their entire life to get them to the size that they are. So they're used to eating things like corn, like gluten, like different you know, fish, fish food, basically it's ground up fish meal and different things like such. So, I have that there. One of the things that kind of goes along that scent though, which is one of my favorite secrets to this, to this corn fishing is adding scent to your corn. Whether it be a crawfish scent, whether it be shrimp, whether it be some kind of krill scent, Krill Cure makes all kinds of different scents. And this one here in particular is the Trout Kokanee Magic. I like this stuff because it's super sticky. It kind of blends in with that corn. And what I'll do right when I get to the lake or even the night before is I'll go through in my little Tupperware of corn and I'll actually add some of these scents to this corn. So I'll let, this, I'll let these marinate in them, whether it be some kind of bait oil, whether it be this super gel that they have, which sticks to that corn very well. Actually, it looks like some hot sauce on there. It almost looks good to eat. So hopefully the trout feel the same way about it. So adding some scent to that corn is gonna up your corn game ten, tenfold. It really, the people that I have seen be very effective using this corn for kokanee or trout, they all scent their corn, they all add different flavors to it so that they're not fishing just that plain corn. So the way I'm gonna fish this corn off the bottom is with this fixed weight system where I have my sliding weight and my barrel swivel. What I'm gonna do normally is I'm gonna identify an area in the lake where you have some sort of traveling lane or it's a good feeding spot for those fish. Maybe look at where they actually stocked the fish on that lake and go ahead and fish in those designated areas because this is gonna be fished on the bottom in one spot. So what I'm gonna do is again, being very delicate in how I cast this, I don't want my corn to fly off when I go to cast. Start right behind me. Nice long rainbow cast out into the middle of the lake. Make sure I see two splashes go out there so that I know that my corn was there. If I see three or four splashes, I know that my corn flew off and went all kinds of different areas. So now that that's on the bottom, I'm gonna make sure it sinks all the way down. So there it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find some sort of rod holder setup, whether it be some rocks, whether it's my cooler, whether it's some kind of little fork stick that I'm gonna stick into the ground. Luckily, in this spot, I have a nice little cement barricade to use as a rod holder. But what I'm gonna do is I'm then gonna bring this over here kind of giving it some lines so that I'm not dragging it along the bottom. I'm gonna lay my rod down at a 45 degree angle over the water, and I'm gonna hold that tight just so I have a little bit of a bend in my rod tip. And what that's doing is that's creating a little bit of pressure against my rod and my line so that when a fish does come and grabs that corn, I'm gonna see that bite register through my rod tip instantly. As soon as anything swims by and bumps that hook, I'm gonna see it on my rod tip because I have that tension and I don't have any slack in between my hook and my rod tip. So what a, hook, what a, a bite like this will look like, they don't really munch on the corn as much. That's kind of the nice part of it. When they eat it, they inhale it, they swallow it, and you got them hooked well. But what you'll see is as these fish swim up and go to grab that corn, you'll see a slight bite start to register just like so. You'll see it bounce, 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 and you wanna pick up that rod slowly until you feel that bite through your rod, through your fingers. It's gonna keep bumping just like so. And then you're gonna lift gradually, but firm, straight up, hold that rod tip high in the air and reel fast along that trout and hopefully have him hooked well to where he fights back and you reel him on into the bank. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys the setup, how I wanna set this up on my slide float. What I'm gonna do first off is I'm gonna calculate how deep it is in the spot I'm gonna be fishing. I'm gonna take my slide float, I'm gonna slide it up to my bobber shop and I'm gonna put it at whatever depth I think, about two feet to a foot above, however long my leader length is honestly, about two to three feet above what I think the actual depth of that spot is. So I got this set at about three feet, I got about a three foot leader, so I'm gonna be fishing about six feet deep here. What I'm gonna do once again is just to use about two pieces of corn, I'm gonna use my scented corn this time, because this stuff is good. I'm gonna run that hook right through it, just like that. Actually, I'm feeling frisky. I'm gonna go ahead and put three pieces of corn on there. All right, now we're gonna go cast this out in the lake. I'm gonna show you guys how your float should look. So again, keeping detail that you don't wanna cast too hard, 
and throw your bait off of there. You're gonna cast about as far as you can out into the lake in front of you. Get it at the right area where the right depth is at. You're gonna make sure that float is standing straight up and down out there in the middle of the lake. If it's laying flat on its side, it means it's set too deep. So you're gonna to need to reel back in and slide your bobber stop down more so that you're not fishing at too deep of a presentation. There we go. So that we're now what we're gonna do, contrary to my fishing on the bottom setup, is I'm gonna leave some slack in my line, hopefully probably about 10 to 20 feet of line laying out there on the lake. I'm gonna prop my rod up on my bag, on a cooler, on whatever else I have, and I'm gonna let that float just do its thing out there, watching it and waiting for it to go down. What a bite will look like on this, again, the, the trout don't mess around with the corn too much. They pretty much just engulf it and eat it, which is the beauty of it. So you'll watch that float out there. It might jump up and down a couple of times, but you want to imperatively wait till that float goes all the way under the surface to set the hook. So when that float goes all the way under, I'm going to grab my rod, reel my slack, lift hard, and set hook on that fish, hopefully piercing it right in the mouth, and then keeping your pressure as you bring it all the way back into the bank. Okay everybody, so that's the corn fishing 101. It's a very, very, very basic way of trout fishing, but it's again, a very effective way. It's a very underutilized method that we see all over the world and all over the United States really. So take that corn with you, experiment with your sense, use those two setups that I've showed you, maybe adding and subtracting some things. Sometimes a really good addition to that corn is maybe a little piece of night crawler or a mealworm or any kind of other bait. The corn just complements it. It's like a little smorgasbord dinner for them out there and they love it. So keep both those techniques in your box. Do not forget about the corn. If you guys liked what you saw today or you use corn yourself, be sure to comment below with what you think of this. What kind of sense do you like to add to your corn? Do you like any other kind of setups that you like to use fishing it? Spread that knowledge, help other people catch fish, and let them go have fun enjoying the great outdoors. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit like, comment below, subscribe to this channel, Addicted Fishing, hit the bell notification, don't forget that. You guys stay fishy. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys out there.